Well, hey guys, as you know, there are a ton of supplements out there that make all sorts of claims about benefits for the skin. Things like collagen gummies, hyaluronic acid tablets. Now I've covered a lot of these supplements in other videos, so definitely check those out. But in this video, we're gonna be talking about a dietary supplement with actual good evidence to support its use for skin benefit. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I am a board certified dermatologist. If you like skincare, skincare product reviews, anti-aging, tips, consider subscribing or follow me over on TikTok or Instagram. I post on those platforms pretty consistently as well. So what is this mystery supplement you speak of? It is nicotinamide, otherwise known as niacinamide. Yes, that's right, the B vitamin, vitamin B3, which is in pretty much every skincare product these days. I know you guys commiserate with me in the comments a fair amount on how niacinamide, while a good ingredient in skincare products, it seems to be something brands are just pumping in left and right, and some people do find it irritating. Anyways, I digress. And if I use nicotinamide and niacinamide interchangeably throughout this video, my apologies, just know they mean the same thing, vitamin B3. This is a water soluble form of vitamin B3 and it's actually important as a precursor for something called NAD. And NAD is important in the process of repairing damaged DNA. So when we're thinking about the skin, one of the biggest stressors that your skin has to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis is environmental stressors, ultraviolet radiation, pollution, infrared radiation, specifically ultraviolet radiation damages the DNA in your skin cells and it also suppresses the immune system that circulates throughout your skin to kind of clear out damage. And that is one of many reasons why sun exposure contributes to skin cancer formation later on, later on in life. It's the immunosuppressive properties as well as the damage to DNA. Nicotinamide is helpful for repairing damaged DNA DNA, it's anti-inflammatory and it inhibits that sun-induced suppression of the immune system in the skin. Where the heck do we get nicotinamide? Is it something that is in the water? Do we make it ourselves? Largely we get it from our diet. You can find it in fish, poultry, legumes, certain grains. It's also in a lot of fortified foods and in nuts. <laughs> Unless you follow an incredibly restrictive diet, there is a good chance you are getting vitamin B3 in your diet. So why would you need to supplement and is it even beneficial? Well, it turns out because nicotinamide is anti-inflammatory, it has been studied in dermatology as a dietary supplement for a few skin conditions, namely a condition which we won't get into in this video for time's sake, bolus pemphigoid. This is a blistering disease that often affects older adults. It can be triggered by medications and in combination with another anti-inflammatory together can help treat that condition, which is a blistering disease. Because niacinamide can help in repairing damaged DNA as well as putting the brakes on that UV mediated immunosuppression in the skin. It has been examined in clinical trials as a supplement to perhaps mitigate uh, skin cancer formation. Older adults who have a lot of sun damage, they make this skin lesion called an actinic keratosis. And an actinic keratosis is a precursor to a skin cancer. The more actinic keratoses that you have, the greater the risk that you will have skin cancer. And it's just kind of a reflection that you've got a lot of sun damage going on. And those patients often have to come in more frequently for skin checks and have these actinic keratoses frozen off and removed. Anyways, so a clinical, Clinical trials have been done looking at nicotinamide 500 milligrams twice a day for four months in people who have a lot of actinic keratoses. At the end of the four months, people getting nicotinamide in these studies had statistically significant fewer actinic keratoses in comparison to people getting the placebo. In addition to having a lot of sun damage, another group of people who are at a greater risk for forming skin cancers are people who have had organ transplants because they are taking medications that suppress their immune system so they're not able to clear out those damaged cells in the skin as well. Because of that, they are at a greater risk for forming skin cancers and they often make a lot of these actinic keratoses. So one study looking at this population of people getting 500 milligrams of uh, nicotinamide, again, twice a day for six months. At the end of the study, those individuals had statistically significant fewer actinic keratoses. Now, I keep saying 500 milligrams twice a day, and one of the studies, they actually looked at taking it once a day, and while the once a day dosage did decrease 
the number of actinic keratoses relative to placebo it was not as much as taking it twice a day. Now, once you make a skin cancer, like a squamous cell carcinoma or a basal cell carcinoma, your risk of making another one is quite high. And that is why once you make one and have it removed, you have to keep going back to the dermatologist to have skin checks to monitor for new ones coming up. So in one study, people who had already had one non-melanoma skin cancer, they were enrolled in this trial, given 500 milligrams of nicotinamide twice a day for a year. At the end of the study, there was a statistically significant decrease in the number of new actinic keratoses that these people were making in comparison to placebo. But importantly, that effect went away after they stopped taking it. So bottom line, taking 500 milligrams of nicotinamide twice a day may help in reducing the number of pre-skin cancers that people make who are at risk for making them. However, you have to keep taking it in order to maintain that benefit. So once you stop, you lose the benefit, you'll just go back to making the same number of actinic keratoses. All right, so that's the people who make a lot of skin cancers. You know, they're, they already have a lot of sun damage. We're talking older adults. A lot of these studies were done in Australia where the UV is quite potent. What if you're somebody who, you know, is in your 20s or 30s you have never had a skin cancer before, you're pretty good about sunscreen or whatever, is this beneficial to you? There's no research to suggest that you need to be taking this um, because you know it's only been really looked at in these populations who are at risk. Um, and again, as I said, it doesn't, it doesn't protect you from a sunburn like sunscreen will. So whether or not people who don't make skin cancers yet or have significant sun damage or are a transplant patient making a lot of skin cancers or pre-skin cancers, it doesn't seem as though it is necessary. We, don't, we just don't have the research to support everybody taking it. It's not free to take it. It's a supplement, you gotta buy it. And like I said, in those people for which this has been studied for, they have to keep taking it in order to maintain those results. So for just everybody to take it, it may not be like the most cost-effective, logical thing to do. How safe is it to take nicotinamide? Is it dangerous? Is it harmful? Are there adverse effects that can occur? Yeah, I mean, you can run into problems with it for sure if you take very high levels. Um, 500 milligrams twice a day appears to be very well tolerated with no side effects. And so that is what is recommended to these patient groups. However, you definitely can run into dangerous side effects when taking very high doses. You can get into toxic ranges if you take too much. Three and a half grams per day will definitely get you to toxic levels that can damage your liver. So starting out, you'll have elevation in the liver enzymes. You can develop nausea, vomiting, headache. It'll make you dizzy, fatigued, and it also can interfere with the platelets. Platelets are the component of your blood important for clotting. And so if you have low platelets, this may not be the best thing for you. It could potentially interfere with that, especially at high levels. You know, nicotinamide, this is a dietary supplement, but it's also sometimes added to like drinks, energy drinks and stuff like that. So you can imagine how, depending on your lifestyle and you know, if you're taking a lot of supplements, you might actually end up running into the territory where you are getting to too high of an amount of this. That is one problem with dietary supplements. They're not regulated, so a lot of times you can get high levels of things, and un, you know, unknowingly so. Same thing happens with B12 supplements. You know, I, I have to take B12 because I am a vegan, but uh, some people take B12 and then they drink energy drinks with B12 added, and then maybe they take some other kind of supplement that has B12 in it, and too much B12 is associated with triggering acne for a lot of people, and they just don't even realize how much B12 they are consuming. So remember, it's not the poison, it's the dose. If you don't read the labels very carefully, you can easily get too much. So that is one word of caution if you are like reading about nicotinamide or you know thinking about it. First of all, hasn't really been investigated for benefit for just generally healthy people. And second of all, you can get to toxic levels uh, and that can seriously damage your liver. The other thing about nicotinamide supplements is that there is potential for medication interaction. So if you take medications, um, definitely discuss with your healthcare provider before considering the supplement, especially if you take the drug carbamazepine. 
uh, that is a medication some people with migraines take, uh, and some and it's an epilepsy, an anti-epileptic medication. So nicotinamide can interfere with the metabolism of that drug and make it get to too high of a level in your body. So that is a potential adverse effect. All right, so you're probably like bummed out, right? Like I, I'm not just here to tell you that this is the end all be all. There's data to support giving it to people who make a lot of skin cancers, but young, otherwise healthy people, your focus should be on protecting your skin from the sun with sunscreen and sun protective clothing, not sunbathing. You're better off putting your efforts there than in chasing after taking this as a supplement. Now, I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, kind of joking around about topical niacinamide or nicotinamide, same, same thing. And you will find that in a ton of skincare products. And it's actually very beneficial for a variety of skin issues when applied topically. Because it's anti-inflammatory, it's an antioxidant, so it kind of helps reduce the burden of oxidative stress in the skin upon exposure to environmental stressors. And there is research in clinical trials looking at topical application of this ingredient for acne. There's a study showing that 4% niacinamide is as effective for moderate acne as 1% clindamycin, a prescription treatment for acne. There's also another study looking at 2% niacinamide gel and showing that that decreases sebum production and reducing oiliness and shine. So uh, the combination of reducing inflammation and reducing sebum output li likely explains why this is a beneficial ingredient for acne. Topical niacinamide also can help uh, alleviate and improve some of the visible signs of skin aging. It's been demonstrated when applied anywhere from two to 4% uh, to help improve the look of fine lines, red blotchiness, likely because it's anti-inflammatory. It also can improve the appearance of sunspots, help them fade, hyperpigmentation, it can help fade and it can help in improving sallow yellow skin, which is one of the visible signs of skin aging that you know people don't really ask about much. I think they don't realize that that is a component of the visible signs of skin aging. They're, they may ask things like complexion improving, uh, you know, how to improve dull skin, but part of some of the visible signs of skin aging is this actual yellowing of the skin due to damage of the underlying Dermal components from chronic UV exposure kind of gives the skin a yellowed appearance combined with a loss of elasticity. Topical niacinamide can kind of improve some of those, some of those visible signs of skin aging. So niacinamide may also be helpful for those of you who deal with rosacea because not only does it help calm down redness, but it has been shown to improve skin barrier function. So for people with rosacea, a key issue that they deal with is this, this problem with barrier, barrier, this barrier issue. It makes them more sensitive to things that come in contact with the skin, irritants. That's why a lot of skincare products are irritating to people with rosacea, cleansers, moisturizers, burn and sting. Niacinamide, if tolerated, can improve barrier function and make the symptoms of rosacea likely better. Plus it's anti-inflammatory, which also benefits rosacea in terms of the bumps that people with rosacea get. So it's a good ingredient for those things. However, um, you know, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it's popping up in skincare products left and right at high percentages, much greater than what has been in, examined in these studies. And it can be irritating. A lot of you guys comment in my videos, gosh, I cannot do niacinamide. Uh, it burns, it stings, it causes irritation. I do not get along with it. And it is in everything these days. I hear you there, I mean, you know, it's not right for everyone and not everyone gets along well with it. And finding products nowadays that are free of it seems increasingly more of a challenge. It's in a lot of cleansers um, and it's in, you know, a lot of serums, moisturizers. All of that to say, uh, oral nicotinamide is, has been shown to be beneficial for people who make a lot of skin cancers. At 500 milligrams twice a day, it is safe, well tolerated. Uh, however, people who have problems with their platelets or people taking carbamazepine should definitely exercise caution with this. And you certainly can't overdo it with oral 
oral nicotinamide, get yourself into liver damage that could be quite deadly for you. Applying it topically to the skin has several benefits provided you tolerate it. All right, y'all, so that is nicotinamide. A lot of you guys have been asking me to talk about it for a while. Now there is another dietary supplement with quite a bit of research to support its use for skin benefit, for hyperpigmentation, improving sun damage from you know spending time outdoors, and it is called polypodium. So so in the description box, as well as on the end slate, I'm going to link that video where I talk all about polypodium. If you missed that, definitely check it out if you were interested in dietary supplements with evidence behind them for their use in skin and skin benefit. Jeff, definitely check that one out. But if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.